Many times over the years, Bill Ellis has been sorely tempted to become a full-time trainer. But despite his passion for the sport, the talented journalist has stuck with his trade and enjoyed his horses on a hobby basis. Almost half a century ago, young Bill landed a school holiday job with Trot Guide, which led to a full-time position and a cadetship. A few years later, he was snapped up by the Sydney Daily Telegraph and recently completed his 40th year with the paper. During his trot guide days, Bill was assigned the job of reporting on the trotting at Sydney's Royal Easter Show. Here, he met the late Cyril Caffin, who was to become his best mate and his inspiration. Spending days off and weekends at the Caffin property, Bill soon developed his talents in the sulky. It was Cyril who talked him into taking out a license, and it was Cyril who gave him his first race drive, and a winning drive at that in 1969. The horse was Graham Laird, and the venue, the big grass track at Richmond. Uh, the owners had planned to have a good bet on him, and uh, funny, funny enough, I, I tipped him. He was on top in the Daily Telegraph. Uh, it was a Saturday afternoon meeting at Richmond, uh, early in October, was the same day that Darby McCarthy rode the Epsom Derby uh, double at, at Randwick. Yep. And uh, uh, the horse was backed in from eight to one to six to four. And did you know that as you went out? Uh, I knew that he was going to be backed, but I didn't know what the what the fluctuations were. It didn't make any difference because Cyril instilled into me and it was something I always saw with him. Uh, one race is just the same as another. It's just another race, whether it be a, you know, a maiden at uh, Brogan Hill or an Inner Dominion. It really is just another race. Cyril Caffin was your friend and your inspiration. Yep. Many say that he was the best driver of his era. No, absolutely no argument from me. And, uh, and even today, I don't think that I've seen a better driver than, than Cyril. But uh, as you say, everybody acknowledged his skill and his, his ability as a, as a driver. But uh, he was also a very good trainer, John. You know, a lot of people... He's didn't, rarely mentioned as a trainer. Yeah, a lot of people didn't recognise or, or didn't realise uh, his ability as a trainer. Well, Bill, your all-time favourite was an aptly named son of Koala Frost yeah. by the name of Winter. You trained him, you drove him in most of his races, uh, and he was just a, a, an honest, durable, very reliable horse. I'd like to have a time over with him, John. Mm. I'd, uh, I think I won about, or well, not, not me, but while I trained him, I think uh, he won about 19 races. Um, he he got to cup class. He really wasn't a cup class horse, but he but he got there. He won his way down there, and and once he got there, he'd hit the wall. And uh, but he still earned prize money as, as he was going around in that grade. But uh, he'd be a lovely horse to have today, and I think that. Uh, uh, I've learned a lot since then, and uh, I'd, as I say, I'd love to have my time over with him. Bill, your, your piece de resistance as a trainer was to prepare the winner of a grand old classic at Harold Park, the Taplow Stakes, with Winsome Star. You didn't drive it up. No, that's, that's, that's a, well, it's something that uh, I hold very dear, John, and uh, if you look through the list of winners of the Tatlow Stakes. Uh, she's got a special place in that race. Yeah. Uh, she's the only filly to have ever won it. And it's it's that's a record that will stand for time immemorial because in those days it was an open race, Colts, Geldings, fillies. Uh, but these days it's for Colts and Geldings only. Yeah. So no filly can ever, that's something that no filly can ever do. Bill's had many highs in harness racing and one or two disappointments. My lowest point in, in harness racing was one night at Mooney Valley when I had a, a little filly called Patrona Glow in the semi-final of the, the Galaxy Grand Slam series. She qualified for that, winning a heat here at Penrith, and we went to Mooney Valley, and she got a bit of a check going out of the back straight. She had about two furlongs to run or 400 metres to, to run and uh, got a check, went down, dropped back, if not last, near last, uh, lost about four or five lengths. And uh, when we turned for home, she was still giving them a bit of a, bit of a start and she got beaten a half head. And I looked across at the clock and the infield timer and it was the fastest heat. 
uh, and I thought, what a terrific effort. And uh, you're on a high, oh, really on a high, and uh, really stoked. And I said, well, you know, bring on next Saturday night because we've got to be a hope of winning the final of this series. And uh, rival driver come up alongside me and said, geez, you must have gone good. That filly must have absolutely fun. I said, Ab you know, incredible performance. He said, bad luck, she's bled. I said, oh, you're kidding. And I looked and my, I nearly fell out of the car. Um, I sunk. Uh, because, well, she got three months. She was out of the, she was out of the, the series. But uh, uh, that led three months later to one of, one of, I think, my crowning glories, my crowning achievements. Uh, she was in a race here, the last two-year-old race of the season. She was off 10 metres in a two-year-old race here, and uh, we got the money at 100 to 1. Patrona Glow the outside. Patrona Glow dashed up. Charlie Smart comes at him. They split the line. A good finish. Patrona Glow and nose. Patrona Glow. You were recently paid a high compliment uh, by your colleagues uh, when you posted 40 years with the Daily Telegraph. I know they made a special presentation to you, and you must be very proud of that. Yes, Mr Murdoch's. There's the gold watch, John. Mr. Murdoch's large yes. I'm very thankful for it. Now, during the 40 years, you've been writing about this sport and this industry. I imagine there have been many times where your pleas for a story fell on deaf ears. I mean, it must have been hard to push the harness racing barrow throughout the years with the major metropolitan newspaper. Yes, although... Sometimes it, it all depends, John. It, 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 uh, as, as you well know, in, in the media, uh, you might have a story which you think is worth running and, and it's probably even in the can and ready to go on that night, but uh, something else breaks, so you get sidelined. And then, of course, in two or three days' time, uh, that's history. That's and right. and yeah. y you can't use it, the story, you know. And that, that happens. That happens. Your passion for this sport has never waned. No. You've been turning up here every Friday night for 40 years, and you always well, look enthusiastic. Actually, it's longer than 40 years because yeah. it's 40 years with, with the Daily Telegraph. Yeah, that, that's not uh, seven with truck drive. Not, really. include, not including the, the span with the truck drive. Half a century. It's fair while. Yeah. I'm still swap here. It. I'm still here. Wouldn't swap it. No, I don't think so, John. I don't think so. I've enjoyed. It's 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 been good to me. Thank you.